In this video, we will show you how to start WordSearch 10, what screens come up when you start it, and what you need to do when those screens come up. When you finish installing WordSearch 10, you should get a shortcut icon for it on your desktop. You may even get one on your Windows taskbar down here. If your computer is a Mac, you will find the WordSearch 10 shortcut icon in the Applications folder. To start the WordSearch 10 program, just double click on its icon. I'm going to do that now and show you what to expect when you start WordSearch 10 for the first time. When you start WordSearch 10 for the first time, you may get a message asking you if you want to download an update. If you get such a message, it will look like this one here. So when you get a prompt to download our update, we recommend that you click on this button here that says, Yes, begin downloading. I'm going to do that now and allow the update to download and install so I can show you what to expect when you download our update. Our updates contain new patches, new fixes, and sometimes they even include product enhancements. When the update finishes, you will be brought to the first screen that always appears when you start WordSearch 10. This screen is called the Easy Start screen. The Easy Start screen contains items such as the News Window, which displays advertisements about our books on sale, as well as links to get those books. The Easy Start screen also contains the button Start WordSearch Bible. Clicking on this button will take you into the library where you can open your books and read your books, write up a Bible study, or prepare your sermon. But please note, you may not be able to read any of your books or prepare any sermons at this time because when you download WordChurch 10 over the internet, it does not come with any books. Unless you already have your books on this computer from a previous version of WordSearch, or you installed one of our disks that already come with books, there will not be any books in your library. You will have to unlock your books first and then download them. But at this time, the most important part of the Easy Start screen that I want to point out is this area in the upper right corner. It's called the Sign In area. You see, number one, you have to be signed in to use the program. Number two, you have to be signed in to get your books. And number three, you have to be signed in to connect to the full Word Search experience. So, at this point, when you start Word Search 10 for the first time, we recommend that you sign in. And I'll do that right now. The sign in process requires that you type in the email address that we have on file in your Word Search account. It requires you to enter in the password to your account, and the password will be something that you created yourself. Uh, and by the way, you only have to sign in once. The program will keep you signed in. Now, if you do not remember your password, or if you are getting an error message that says something like, the email address and password provided do not match our records, Click on this link here, Forgot Your Password, and we will email you a reset password instruction document so that you can reset your own password. Now, if you are not a registered WordSearch customer, or if you are not a registered QuickVerse customer, you will need to click on Register for a WordSearch ID and fill out our registration form. Registering for a WordSearch ID creates an account in your name. It inserts your email address into your account. It signs you in and keeps you signed in. And registering for a WordSearch ID allows you to connect to the full WordSearch experience. And if you're still having problems signing in or registering, just call our customer service department at 1-800-888 
9898. They are open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, and from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Okay, now that we're signed in, you are ready to enter the Word Church 10 library. To do that, just click on Start Word Church Bible. To see what it looks like when you enter the Word Church 10 library for the first time, you will have to watch our next video in this series called Starting Word Church 10 for the First Time, Part 2.